Have you ever heard of a company called King? Maybe not, but I guess Candy Crush sounds familiar to you. Well, it is one of the many games developed by King and presumably one of the reasons they got bought in 2016 for nearly 6 billion dollars by Blizzard. Okay, awesome, but why am I telling you this? Well, I found a website called royalgames.com which is actually hosted by King. As you can see, they offer so-called skill games that you can play either for free or for money. Luckily, one of them is Candy Crush, for which I'm going to write a bot that hopefully crushes it. So, let's make it happen. In order to play Candy Crush, we must start the browser, go to Royal Games, log in, search for Candy Crush and start it. Every time. That's a waste of time. So I wrote a few lines of code to automate it. Let's see what it looks like. Awesome, that worked. So now we see how a freshly started game looks like. I won't go into the game details since you can just google them. Let's better talk about some specifics of the Candy Crush version on Royal Games. On the top left corner is the time. We have 4 minutes to get as many points as possible. Below is a progress bar that we can fill by getting points. If the progress bar is filled up we reach a higher level which only increases the points we are getting for crushing candies at which I am quite bad at, as you might have noticed by now. But how am I, or you, able to play the game? It seems like we look at the tiles and automatically see which candy is in each tile. Then we interpret what we see and move the mouse to two tiles where we think it makes sense to switch them. Sadly, that's not so easy for a computer program to do, but it's still doable. Let's start with the candy detection. There are multiple ways to do it because there's a finite number of candies that do not change their optics. Not even a bit. But if you look closely, you can see that the lighting differs slightly. That makes it harder to read specific pixel values. Cause of that, I'm going to use an AI approach, a so-called neural network, to detect the candies. But how exactly does it work? First, I had to take a screenshot of the grid, followed by splitting it into 81 images. That is, one for each candy. Even with automating this step, it took a few hours to extract two images for each of the 25 candy types. Each type got its own folder using a self-defined naming scheme that is first the color name, then an S or W where S stands for striped and W for wrapped. If the candy is striped, you can see another letter, H or V, where H stands for horizontally striped and V for vertically striped. Maybe you saw the folder called special. This one stands for the special candy that you get when combining 5 candies in a row or column. These images were used to train the neural network. The trained version can then be used for classification by querying it with candy images. To show you what it looks like, I created a grid overlay showing the candy classification of the neural network while I played the game. Note that the network is queried multiple times per second with the current candy images. Also note that the game is locked during candy explosions because it is not possible to make a move during that time. With that working I was able to write a simple logic to find a very good move each time. Let's first discuss it before showing the final result to you. First I had to determine how good each move is, so I created a scorecard that is 0 points for less than 3 candies in a row, 1 point for exactly 3 candies in a row, 2 points for 4 candies in a row, 3 points for the T slash L shaped combination which is needed to create a wrapped candy. Also 3 points for swapping wrapped striped and special candies with each other. Except 2 striped ones cause the resulting effect isn't that great. And finally 4 points for 5 candies in a row. Using the scorecard the bot loops through each candy on the grid, simulates a swap for each of the possible directions and then looks in each direction to calculate the resulting neighbors. Those are then interpreted based on the scorecard. Finally, the best calculated move gets executed by letting the bot click on the tiles that need to be swapped. Let's finally see how the bot is playing. Wow, 
Wow, that looks great. There's so many calculations in the background and the bot is still that fast. I'm impressed. But that was just part of a random round. After recording it, I let the bot play for 4 hours. Let's watch its best round. Are you kidding me? That's nearly 2.5 times my high score. But yes, okay right, I'm a noob, so let's compare it to the high scores of the highest ranked Candy Crush players on Royal Games. Okay, everything above 300k seems to be a lucky round happening to a great player, cause even the two highest ranked players only got a high score of around 250k. So what do I think about the 208k in comparison? Well, I think it's a great score, remembering that the bot only played around 4 hours and was using a simple logic where fine tuning is still possible. I also saw that nearly all the high ranked players played the game at least 5000 times. That brings me to the end of the video. If you liked it, please like it. If you really liked it and you wanna see more, subscribe. And I'd also love to get feedback from you guys, so please comment below what you liked and or what you didn't, or write me a message.